Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about comparing more than two probabilities. In a previous video, hopefully linked right up here, we talked about what you can do when you have two probabilities, and now we're going to extend that whole problem to more than two. And so in that previous video, we had a structure just like this, uh, but G, capital G down here, was only two, but now capital G can be as large as you want. And so we're going to have different observations for our different groups, that's what G represents, each group will have some number of attempts and some number of successes. And at least to start out, we're going to assume that they all have their own probability of success theta g. And the question is really to make statements about those different parameters theta g. As a reminder, these do have to be independent. So that is, uh, you have to make sure that there's uh, no relationship between the observations from one group and the observations from another group. Uh, all right, so uh, we can do similar things that we've done before. We can calculate p-values. One test that might be of interest is to say, well, let's assume in the null hypothesis that all of the probabilities are true. Sorry, not that they're true. All the probabilities are equal. All right, and now if that p-value is small, now you might want to start going and investigating further. And one investigation you might want to do is to say, well, let's try to start picking out pairs and say whether these pairs of different probabilities are true. Uh, equal or not, and having that set of null hypotheses for some collection of uh, g and g prime that are different from each other. Uh, you can also calculate confidence intervals for any differences that you're interested in. On a Bayesian side of things, you can have a posterior distribution for each of the individual parameters. You can calculate credible intervals for differences. You can calculate posterior model probabilities or posterior probabilities of comparisons between those parameters. Okay. So uh, here's a data example. It just extends the data example that we had before. So we have two processes. Now we're adding a third. Uh, in each of the processes, we're just going to record how many times that process successfully created a product that was within our design specifications. And so we have now just added this process three. And this process three, maybe it was only a pilot trial. So we only tried a very short run, but it happened to get 10 out of 10 attempts in successfully in uh, the uh, specification range. So now compared to the other two, we have a lot less data because we only have 10 runs as opposed to 140 and 230. But hey, all of them were successful, so that sounds promising. And so we want to be able to make some kind of statement about this kind of situation. Now the last bit here is just how I coded it up in R and that we'll be using in the future. But just notice here that successes and attempts are both vectors of length 3. Uh, all right, so uh, sort of a standard uh, first thing to look at is in the null hypothesis that says all of those probabilities are equal. Uh, we can use the prop.test function that we've seen before to test that equality. Uh, we're going to come back in a second to that warning, but it's important here. Uh, but aside from that warning, right, there's no evidence here, given a p-value that's 0.43, that our data are very incompatible with this hypothesis and the associated binomial independence model. Uh, all right, so if we were interested in using uh, and calculating confidence intervals here, you'll notice the output of this function didn't show you any confidence intervals. Um, what we really need to do is we need to just select the individual comparisons we want to make. So here's comparing, uh, I guess, the first and the third uh, to see if there's, uh, see if our data are incompatible with the model that says that those two are equal. Uh, we have that same warning here. Oh, sorry, we didn't do the, uh, the, hypothesis test, but that would be output from this particular uh, function. Uh, but the confidence interval here is between what minus uh, 0.1 and about 0.03, right? So zero is within that confidence interval. So there's uh, the p-value we know would be greater than 0.05. Uh, and right, it seems like the data are compatible with those two having the same probability of success. Uh, okay, so let's address that uh, warning. So that warning uh, is basically due to the fact that one of your sets of data is 10 successes out of 10 attempts. Uh, and that creates some problems with the, uh, the, at the mathematics under which that underlies what's going on here. Uh, an alternative to using that prop.test is something called this, or this function chi-square test. Um, and if you do it by the default, you still get the same warning, and that's related to the exact same thing. Uh, but you can do this simulate.p-values is true. Uh, and that uses a different approach that doesn't have the same problems that uh, revealed that warning. Uh, and so you can get a p-value associated with this more robust analysis. Uh, but you'll notice in this case, those p-values are about the same. So still no, uh, not much strong indication that your data are incompatible 
with a model that has all of those probabilities equal and the binomial independent assumptions. Okay, so if we do the Bayesian piece, uh, I guess I skipped out on the slide that actually shows you what the posteriors are, but they're exactly the same as what we had before. So if you assume independent beta, uh, if you assume independent beta uh, priors, then you get independent beta posteriors. If you assume the beta 1, 1, which is the uniform 0, 1 prior, uh, then these are the posteriors you get. So those two peak distributions are exactly what we saw before. And now that process three distribution here, um, right, that's the posterior for that probability of success according to process three. And now um, this is actually, I think, a bit informative because it tells you, look, we are much more uncertain about that probability of success under the process three than we are about process one and two, right? You should have probably known that intuitively because we only had 10 trials. But this gives a visual depiction of it where, look, that probability success can actually still be really small. So even though the point estimate might be 100%, right, uh, we still don't have that much confidence that it's that good. So we did a pilot one, we probably want to do more runs. Now, of course, we might want to do what we did before and do uh, look at, say, credible intervals for differences. And so we can do that. I'm not going to go through all the code here. You can do that yourself. But if you'll notice right on the very bottom, we have probabilities that one parameter is less than another parameter for all three combinations of parameter comparisons that we could do. And so we could use those probabilities down there to make decisions. Okay, so uh, as a summary of what we did between this video and the previous video, uh, we basically showed a situation where we have multiple independent binomial models with possibly different probabilities or proportions. And we just showed how at least we can use R code uh, to look at p-values were relative, uh, relevant hypotheses, confidence intervals, posterior probabilities, uh, credible intervals, posterior uh, densities, and so forth. So the next video is going to talk about basically going through this same setup, but now we're going to have normal distributions with possibly with multiple groups and possibly different means in each of those groups. Hope to catch you there.